Are you setting listing appointments, you're meeting up with the sellers and then out of nowhere they tell you, you know what, we're actually not that serious about selling. Or maybe you're coming across homeowners that tell you that they want to sell and then you're like, well, what do I ask next? How do I know if, you know, this is going to go somewhere? Or maybe you are meeting with sellers and then they tell you that they went with another agent. Well, today we are going to be covering everything that has to do with pre-qualifying sellers. If you have been in a position where you might be lost and confused trying to figure out what questions to ask, maybe you're asking the wrong questions or maybe there's a lot of questions you're just not asking, make sure to take your pen and paper out because we are going to be covering all of that today in the next few minutes. Um, as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up, like, share, drop us a comment. I know that there's quite a few of you already watching. Let us know where it is that you're tuning in from. And just like my previous live streams, it's not just going to be me. I'm going to bring on my guest, Robert Villanueva. Go ahead, Robert, introduce yourself once again for the audience. Yeah, absolutely. Always a pleasure. So this is always fun doing these things uh, live. So very appreciative. Again, my name is Robert Villanueva. I've been, uh, been in the business since 99 and uh, been a coach now for a little over uh, about 10, 11 years now. Uh, so love coaching. People ask me, what do I do for a living? I say I make millionaires. So I love doing that. Absolutely. You know, and I love doing these live streams with you because you have so much knowledge, uh, obviously a lot more experience than I do. So between myself and you, we're able to answer all of these agents questions and hopefully make them millionaires so that then later they can DM us, send us messages and let us know that, hey, I implemented what you said and it actually works. Yep. So with that being said, you know, before we get started on the training, Robert and I know each other just through our network. We're both with Real Broker. Um, mm -hmm. We've been doing a lot of stuff together. We absolutely love the company that we're with. So if you have been enjoying these live streams, if you like, you know, the way that Robert teaches, the way that I teach, um, there's a link in the description box below. If you are interested in just partnering up with us, or maybe you're interested in making a switch from the company that you're with. So again, all of the links will be in the description box below. Um, there's also a Facebook group that we're going to be talking about top reels or training. Robert does a lot of trainings on there Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I do role playing with Robert every Wednesday. So again, everything is going to be down below. Now mm -hmm. we, we got that out of the way. We're just going to get straight to the point. Let's begin with the very first question. What does pre-qualifying mean? Yeah, I mean, pretty simple. Um, we, you know, for the bot on the buyer side, we're, we're going to address that here real quick because we're going to talk about the seller side, but just to make sure that we cover all of our bases on the buyer side, we don't go out and show properties unless we actually know that they're uh, purchasing position, whether they're going to be paying cash or if they're going to be going through a qualification process using a loan. So with that, we obviously want to make sure that we get them qualified so that we're not showing them 30, 40, 50 houses. And, um, you know, at the end, OK, well, let me think about it. Let me see if I even qualify. We don't we don't take that approach with buyers. Um, and the reason I start with that is because it's almost the same thing when it comes time to sellers. However, for whatever reason, a large percentage of agents don't go through the pre-qualification process. And what does it mean? What it basically means is going through asking a series of questions and in the purpose of the pre-qualification is two main things. Number one is to determine with what their motivation is, because that's mostly with what we are going to be, of course, presenting on. And then number two is any potential objections. Okay, so that's the primary purpose of the prequel. Awesome. So with that being said, my next question is, why is it critical to pre-qualify sellers? Yeah. And then the pre-qualification, again, just to make sure the audience is 100 percent clear, it's a series of questions we're going to ask them in preparation of the listing presentation. It's not about their financial position, which a part of it will be, but it's not so much specifically about that. Why is it important? Because I'm going to give you two scenarios. Number one is the typical agent. And what does a typical agent basically do? They set an appointment, they celebrate and they go, OK, well, I'm going to go out and I'm going to present to, you know, Loida and her husband and let me find out with what it is that they want to do. And I'm going to just brag about how great I am. I go there, I present and I talk about uh, Loida. I'm this, I'm that, I'm here. My company does all this other stuff. Here's the price. This is the value. This is how much money you're going to make. So what do you guys think? Oh, you're going to think about it. OK, great. That's a large percentage, but it's critical because when you go through the pre-qualification process and you ask the right questions, your presentation 
And because of the questions, it gives you the opportunity to present differently. Now, when I pre-qualify, I am going to, of course, present on your motivation, your desires. I may even uh, talk a little bit about any potential objections, and I can even sprinkle in some of the objections in part of my presentation. You know, as an example, you know, Lloyd, I know that there are plenty of other realtors to choose from. Now, there are realtors where their focus is primarily just on being the cheapest realtor. And then there are other realtors like myself where we really take emphasis on making you the most amount of money. I mean, just so that I'm clear, you're not looking for the cheapest realtor. You're looking for the agent that's going to make you the most money. And then we go into the rest of the presentation. So that's kind of an example. And that's why it's critical so that when we are at the end of the presentation, it gives us the opportunity to close easier versus the, yeah, you're right. Think about it. I'll check back with you next week and then come to find out you list with somebody else. Yes. So just to be clear for everyone that's watching, typically when does the pre-qualifying questions usually come in? So um, we set an appointment between the setting of an appointment um, and the attending of the appointments is where you're going to want to do that. So if I set an appointment with you for tomorrow, anytime between today and before I show up is ideal. The most preferable time is going to be between 24 to 48 hours in advance. 20 to 48 hours. Yeah. Would you recommend to pre-qualify on the spot if you, like, let's say I'm calling expires or for sale by owner, and they say, you know what, Robert, um, I'll, I'll give you a chance. We're available tomorrow at five o'clock. Mm -hmm. What would you say next? So if it's an expired, I have to go through the pre-qual right there. I have to because going and setting an appointment, sometimes it's already a challenge to set an appointment. And then I try to call you back, even if it is, you know, 15 minutes later. Well, now all of a sudden I'm getting ghosted. I'm just in the rest of the mix of the other agents. And then I just kind of get lost. So with an expired, I am absolutely adamant that you have to pre-qualify on the spot because if not, you're going to basically 99% chance that you're actually not even going to be able to attend the appointment. Um, you know, or be unprepared for the appointment. With other sources, you know, there's kind of this scale, if you want to call it that. With FISBOs, maybe you're competing with other realtors, but it doesn't have to be today. Maybe the appointment is set for Friday. You might give yourself a little bit of a buffer. If you're calling or door knocking a community and you set an appointment for like next Monday or Tuesday, what well, doesn't have to be right now at this very instant, you can do it a couple days in advance. If it's our uh, personal database, that's usually the 24, 48 hours is where we end up at. So that's kind of the general rule. There you go. So if you're watching this, if it's an expired, you want to make sure that you are asking the questions on the spot because, you know, it has happened to me. It probably has happened to you, especially newer agents. We think we have an appointment and we say, okay, you know what? I'm going to call you tomorrow at four o'clock. You mm -hmm. call, they don't answer. They don't respond to your text messages. You thought you were going to get a listing and now you have you don't have anything pretty much at the end of the day. Yeah. And then you end up stuck in, in no man's land. You end up setting an appointment. You you don't end up pre-qualifying. And then you're just kind of like, OK, I've called Lloyd like four times. She hasn't answered. I've texted her a handful of times. What do I do? Do I go to the appointment? Do I not go to the appointment? You know, am I prepared? Do I, you know, do all this stuff? And then, you know, we end up driving to the appointment and then I hope she's home. I hope she's home. And then. You know, so we end up in no man's land. So we always want to make sure we make it very black and very white. Yeah, absolutely. And for those of you that are watching this, if you have any questions, any scenarios that maybe you have gone through, go ahead and put them in the comments. That way we can bring them up um, as we're getting uh, ready to wrap this up towards the end. Um, but regarding pre-qualifying, I want to do something a little different. Maybe we can do like a very quick role play just so that people can listen to some of the questions. So let's say, you know, I'd say, Robert, I am available tomorrow, five o'clock. Um, you can stop by then. Awesome. You know, Lloyd, I really appreciate that. I'm really looking forward to helping you and your husband get over to San Diego. Now, in order for me to be prepared for our appointment for tomorrow at five o'clock, I just need to go through, ask you a few questions. Do you have an extra three to five minutes? I can ask you those questions now. Uh, yeah, I do. Awesome. I really appreciate that. Now, Lloyd, if what I say makes sense, and of course, I want you and your husband, of course, to be absolutely comfortable. And I want you to be confident that I can sell your home. Are you guys planning on listing your home with me when I come out tomorrow at five o'clock? It really depends. Um, I know my husband was talking to another agent. I'm not sure if we have even set an appointment, but I mean, if everything sounds good, I mean, we might give you a chance. OK, so I just want to make sure that I'm in a position, you're in a position where if everything does align, you could make that decision if if everything aligned. 
yeah, uh, we absolutely need to sell. So yes. Awesome. Now you mentioned to me that there is the possibility of interviewing another agent. Um, is it just one other agent that I'm competing with or is there multiple agents? No, right now it was just another agent that has been calling and kind of following up. Um, so that's what we were thinking about also interviewing him. That okay. way we can kind of compare what you have to say maybe with someone else. I love that. And I'm so super grateful at the fact that I'm working with smart sellers like yourself. It's always a good idea to make sure you have alternative options. If I may ask, Lloyda, if I were to bring my track record as well as the other agent's track record, would that be helpful in, in you making a decision? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Who, who am I competing with against? Uh, Joe Schmo. Joe Schmo. Oh, yeah, I know Joe. Okay. Yeah, definitely a great agent. What are you looking for in your agent, by the way? You know, we came off the market. The last agent said that it was going to, the home was going to sell in 30 days, open houses and all this stuff, you know, sold us the dream and nothing happened. So, you know, we just want a straight shooter, mm -hmm. uh, someone that's not going to waste our time and obviously get the job done for the most money. We want to be able to pocket a lot. Okay. So straight shooter. So somebody who's not going to be sitting there giving you all kinds of fluff, uh, someone who's going to maximize your profits. And then um, I'm assuming, I don't want to uh, uh, over-assume, but um, also somebody who's going to communicate regularly as well, correct? Yes. Yeah, we need to know exactly what's happening. Okay. And then, of course, we have the track record that we are going to compare. Um, anything else that you're looking for in your realtor besides those uh, key items? Um, you know, maybe professional pictures. The last agent came in with their cell phone and the pictures were kind of crooked. He came out in the bathroom <laughs> picture. So, I mean, you know, we just want a professional. Absolutely. And I really appreciate that. So I make sure that I'm going to address all of these things. Now, besides myself and Joe, where there'll be anybody else that you will be looking at interviewing? Uh, no, not really. Okay. All right. Good. Now, you mentioned to me that your goal is to get down to San Diego. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. What, what part of San Diego are you guys uh, moving to? Uh, to Chula Vista. Oh, there we go. Well, what in specific is waiting for you in Chula Vista? We have some family out there. I mean, we're not in a super rush. Sure. to move out there but we have family so we kind of just eventually want to make the transition awesome now who in your family is most excited about you guys coming out uh the kids ah there you go all right and how, how many kids uh do you have two two what's their ages uh seven and ten. Oh, there we go okay so are we taking school into consideration in this move as well um no not really i homeschool them so it's not a big deal Okay. Yeah. You mentioned you weren't in a rush, which is part of the reason why I asked in that direction. I don't know if we had some timing that was involved. When would be the ideal time to get your property sold so that we can get you down to San Diego? Well, you know, right now we're in March. If we could be down there by summertime so we can enjoy it with our family, that would be great. Um, we're not in a rush, but we do want to make this move happen. And, you know, I've just been getting a lot of calls even still. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's where we're at. Yeah, absolutely. So, so I'm hearing that you want to get there sooner than later, but you're not in this like desperate, dire, I got to sell now position. Yeah. Got that. Okay. And, and then as far as pricing is concerned, um, when I see you, how, how much would you like to list your home for? Well, we previously went on the market for 800000 I think that that was a great price. Mm -hmm. uh, the home is fully remodeled. We updated the kitchen, the bathrooms. Um, um, I don't know. We will kind of leave it up to you as well to to let us know what you're thinking regarding price. Yeah, you know, and I really appreciate that. See, part of my job, Lloyd, as a professional real estate agent, that's basically with what I do. I study homes and prices every single day. That's in a nutshell with what I do. Now, I'm assuming you're going to list with me, though, at a price that will cause it to sell versus it continuing to sit on the market like you have been for the last six months, correct? Yeah, but we're not going to give the home away either. Oh, good thing, because neither am I. <laughs> What's the price you wouldn't want to go below? Um, no less than like seven fifty. There we go. Yeah, I want to definitely stay away from that for sure. I want to make sure that we maximize your profit. Um, I'm also going to prepare a net sheet, and I want to make sure that I uh, show you exactly with what you're going to be looking at profiting. H how much do you own the property? Um, you know, that's kind of a personal question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no worries. What I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare a net sheet. I'll put zero in there and then you can go ahead and just put whatever your balance is when we get together and you can determine what, what that profit is. Would that be okay with you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That totally works. Awesome. And I, I don't want to assume in this case, you guys are not in a position where you're thinking about selling this home yourself, right? Oh, no, no, no. 
Okay. All right. Got it. And then I know it's kind of a little bit of a silly question, but are you guys in a position to help finance the home for the buyer or did you guys want to cash out completely and take all the money with you to San Diego? No, we want to cash out. Okay. Got it. So hundred percent cash out. Perfect. And then I do see here, your house is four bedrooms, two baths, a little over 2000 square feet on a 7,500 square foot lot. I know that you mentioned you updated the kitchen and the bathrooms. What else can you share with me about your home? Um, it's in a cul-de-sac. So okay. it's in a great location, good school district. I mean, we love our home here. We've done a lot of stuff to it. Good neighborhood. That's all I can really think of. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, perfect. So I got all of that down, which I really appreciate. Now on a scale of one to 10, 10 being absolutely model perfect and one being the complete opposite of that, how would you rate your home? Probably like an eight. Oh, good. I'm really looking forward to seeing that. What would actually make it a 10? Um, probably just a new coat of paint. Maybe the landscaping could be a little bit better. Okay. Coat of paint and then uh, landscaping. Are you guys planning on addressing any one of these? Possibly. I think maybe once you come here, you can let us know if you really think we should do something. I just don't want to spend thousands of dollars putting it into here. And then, you know, maybe the buyer wants to do it. So I guess we'll see. Yeah, and I really appreciate your trust. See, Lloyd, the last thing I ever want any of my clients to do is be in a position, like you said, where they invest thousands and thousands of dollars in hope of making a few extra pennies. What I'd rather do is, of course, give you my professional opinion and see if it makes most sense. But we'll go ahead and go over that tomorrow at five o'clock. Um, besides you and your husband, is there anyone else that needs to be there with us uh, in order to make a decision tomorrow? Nope, it's just the two of us. Perfect. Just so you know, our meeting should really be between five, no more than about 20 minutes of your time. Is that okay with you? Yeah, that's perfect. Awesome. I want to be, of course, respectful of you and your husband's time. I want to be as efficient as I possibly can be. Is there any questions you have for me uh, before I let you go? Um, what is the commission that you're going to charge? Oh, I'm so glad you asked that question, Lloyd. And we're going to go over all of the variable options that are available. Um, now, is there a specific commission you're looking at being charged? Well, the last agent was charging us 4% and that's kind of where I want to be at. I yep. don't want to overpay or, you know, pay five or six or 7%. So, I mean, sure. um, yeah, I just want to let you know. Yeah, absolutely. And I totally respect that. Now, Lloyd, if I may, um, I'm going to reassure you right now that you're not going to pay me $1 more than what you feel as if though I'm worth. Is that okay with you? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. We'll go over that tomorrow. Any other questions? No, that's pretty much it. Awesome. All right, Lloyd. Well, I definitely look forward to getting you, your husband, your seven, and of course, your 10 year old down to Chula Vista. And we'll get you the guys there by the summertime. I'm prepared because I know Joe, I'm going to be competing with him. So I want to make sure that I uh, put uh, my absolute best foot forward. I'll see you guys tomorrow, five o'clock. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Awesome. That was great. If you guys enjoy that, let us know, drop us a comment, tell us yes. Um, some of the few things that I caught, and I'm going to just quickly post this here. Celeste said, you know, this prequel is great. Love how you went back and forth on both scripts. I did notice that when you were asking who was more excited and also to ask questions and how you ask more questions about motivation, which I think is extremely important because if someone's not motivated, they're probably not going to make a decision when you go over. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Let, let me let me add just a little bit, just since I'm on the outside of the um, the actual role play to make sure that the audience mm -hmm. does also understand. Um, the first thing is, is right out the gate that I'll say is the question we don't ask is almost always the question that bites us in the butt. Right. Um, you know, uh, I'll give you an example. Um, my sister in law, my wife's sister. Okay. Uh, went out, did a presentation. She's my sister-in-law. Why, why would I ask her if she's interviewing other agents? She said she was going to think about it. And I said, yeah, of course, not a problem. You know, I'm not really like trying to put this pressure on you. Anyways, I gave her a call back like four or five days later. And I said, Hey, so what's up? You guys going to do this or, or, or not? So, Oh, well, you know what? We decided we're going to end up going with my other friend. This is my wife's sister. And I did not ask the question, are you planning to interview more than one agent for the job of selling your home? And I took it for granted. <laughs> so, so we have to make sure we ask all the questions. The, the second thing is if you notice, I extracted some motivation and the motivation being the kids, being in Chula Vista, being with, you know, family, so on and so forth. So when I go through and I start to present, it gives me the opportunity to talk a little bit more about Chula Vista. 
when I'm there and I'm sitting there with you and your husband, it gives me the opportunity to ask the husband, so tell me what's in it for you? What are you most looking forward to? Oh, your family's here as well, blah, blah, blah. And I get the opportunity to talk a little bit about them. The mistake that agents make is, is that they go there, they try to wow them, knock their socks off about, here's me, this is what's amazing about me. I got this, I got that, I got that award, this other stuff, this is why I'm so great. Um, here's the price of your home. Uh, so what do you guys think? You guys ready? We get them to, in a sense, think more instead of act more. Absolutely. And another question that you asked that I know a lot of agents probably would avoid asking this is if I had any thoughts about selling the home myself. Yeah. So what is the logic so that agents know behind asking that question? Yeah, it's, it's basically just covering all of your bases. And again, it's always that one question that you don't end up asking. And then I go out there and they go, well, we appreciate the information. The first question out the gate is if what I say makes sense, you feel comfortable and confident, are you planning to list your home with me? That's the first question because in that, we go out there and they go, oh, well, thanks for the information. We're gonna go ahead and refinance. What, what are you talking about? I thought you were selling your house. Or they go, great, thanks for the information. We're gonna end up listing it ourselves." you know, as an example. So we obviously, of course, follow it up more specifically when we go and ask that question, have you ever thought about selling it yourself? Well, it's a thought, it's a possibility. You know, we were a little bit frustrated with the whole process. We might consider that as, as a potential option. So now again, because as I mentioned at the beginning, it gives us the opportunity to sprinkle some of this stuff in. So when I go through, when I do my presentation, I can sit there and basically say, Loida, you know, here's the benefits of working with a realtor. This is exactly why working with a professional realtor like myself is, is advantageous. I know people, and I say this in general, I know people uh, do have an option to always try to sell it themselves. However, unfortunately, people like that, they don't realize that they end up leaving money on the table because their best negotiation skills is based on their last sale. That's what I do. I do that for a living. Okay. Without saying Loida, you know, it's a bad idea. I just, um, I'm able to sprinkle that into the presentation itself. Absolutely. All of this is great information. Once again, if you guys have any specific questions, drop them in the comments. Um, I know that you already addressed some of the common mistakes agents make, but even kind of going further into what you just mentioned, asking those questions when you're pre-qualifying before going on the appointment also allows you to prepare and practice your objection handling because yeah. now you know okay they might think about selling so i got, i have to know how to deliver on the fact that using an agent is so much better than doing this on your own um another thing that i want to talk about and this is something that i have been told um and you it kind of goes along the lines of you know your sister-in-law is let's say an agent has a lead they've been talking to for months four five six months i've been talking to the husband oh the husband's the decision maker but he has a wife but the husband's the one that you know calls the shots right and he finally says you know what robert come on over we're ready to sell the house and you think you know this is a listing appointment um a, a, a mistake that i see agents do is that they'll go on the appointment but they never really had communication with the spouse or mm -hmm. found out anything about it and then nothing happens. How do you prevent things like that to happen? Asking um, you know, uh, questions along the line, again, furthering the motivation. What's the benefit of making this move? Who's most excited about making this move? How does your husband feel about this move? What's the advantage for your husband in making this move? It gives us the opportunity to be able to be in a position where we can at least gather that. Because you're right, there are times where we'll go through and it's kind of like, um, you know, like when uh, back when we were kids and going to church and our, our parents are like, listen, listen, right? So then we go to the presentation and then, uh, you know, I'm sitting next to your husband and you're the one that wants to sell, but your husband's like, no, I'm not having this. And you're kind of like, look, listen, listen, honey, that, that's what I'm trying to tell you. Yeah, tell them, Robert, tell them. <laughs> and then it kind of becomes this tag team. And then it kind of becomes weird and awkward because we're like trying to tag team and, and trying to get, you know, the husband in this case to make a decision on moving forward. So sometimes asking questions in advance, you'll also know as to who the one is going to be that is the lesser motivated. And for that matter, maybe you might have to work them a little bit more. Yeah. And then also doing that, you also need to make sure that all of the decision makers will be present. So even yep. though I say, you know, I'm the one that's going to make the decision, this is my health anyway. Um, you want to make sure that 
my spouse has been in the loop this entire time because sometimes the big mistake is that you think you have it in the bag. It's like, oh, I've been talking to Robert since like last year. I'm the only agent. You show up to the appointment, both husband and wife is there. They don't sign. And then it turns out that, you know, the wife has been talking to another agent. And even though the husband says, you know, this is my house, the, the wife is like, no, honey, we're going to go with this agent. They sign off and you're like, I thought this was my listing all along. And it was it. Yeah. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that as well, because there are some um, extreme cases, some rare uh, occasions, some special occasion situations in regards to that. Um, my personal policy is I don't go on a presentation unless all decision makers are present, uh, which is obviously with what you're saying. But Robert, what about when they're going through a divorce? Well, that's a special circumstance. I still want to make sure that they are present. I didn't say physically present. I can have one person right in front of me and the other person on the phone. I can have both of them via Zoom. I can have them, you know, in a sense, um, being, uh, uh, you know, apart from each other. But what I don't want to do um, is be in a position where I go through and Lloyd says, well, I'm the decision maker. My husband said I can make the decision and whatever I say is going to go. I don't want to go and be in a position where I go through the entire process. I go through and I present because I already know what Lloyd is going to say. Lloyd is going to sit there at the very end and she's going to say, you know what, Robert, that was awesome. You're great. You're absolutely amazing. You're super professional. I really definitely want to be in a position where you're going to be our agent. Um, and I, yeah, yeah, we're definitely going to be doing this. So um, let me just talk to my husband and then we'll get back to you. Gosh, dang it. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that almost always is uh, is what ends up happening. It's up biting us in, in, in the foot. The other thing, too, is we look on the title and it says Joe uh, it says uh, Joe and Barbara Smith. Right. And we're just like, well, of course, Joe's going to be there. Barbara's going to be there. They told me that's going to be there. But and then come to find out that there's a third person. You know, whether it's an adult child, which for whatever reason, I don't know why that is right now for me. I'm having all of these adult children being partaking in the decision. You know, I'm speaking to the 55, 60, 70 year olds and all of a sudden their 30, 35 year old, you know, son or daughter is now wanting to partake in this. They've never sold real estate. But for whatever reason, the parents want them to partake in this. But I don't ask the question. I show up and well, uh, let, let me talk to my daughter. You know, so I want to make sure, which I have not put myself in that position in a very long time, but I do get surprised. I'll go through, Loida, I know you and your husband. Is there anyone else that needs to be there? Well, I just want to make sure my daughter is here. Oh, okay, good. Well, let's make sure that she's there. Anybody else besides you, your husband and your daughter? No, just I just want to make sure that my daughter is with us because she wants to be a part of the decision-making process. She wants to make sure everything goes through. Absolutely. So, yeah. Now, I'm glad that you touched on that because I think sometimes... What we don't want to do is that we do not want to assume that all decision makers are going to be there. Yeah. And we also don't want to assume that just whoever's on title are making the decisions because just like you're saying, you know, there's an adult child that's involved in the decision making. Mm -hmm. I've also gotten the younger couple that's like, you know what, it's just my husband and I on the title, but we want to run this through our parents yeah. because they've been in this longer than we have. They bought and sold. So uh, yeah, that can cause a lot of headaches. Um, it, it's better to ask more questions and then later be like, okay, you know, let's reschedule to make sure that everyone is there together. Yeah. Because the last thing that you also want to do is go on an appointment. Um, what I love to do it and you do it too. We confirm before we go on the appointment, just to make sure if anything has changed, if someone's not going to be present, well, you know what, let's reschedule so that we can all get together. If yeah. you meet just with one, what can end up happening is that they're not going to be able to explain or relay the information the same way that you did. Yeah. And they might have questions and they would be like, wait, Robert, what did you say? So-and-so said, you know what? I forgot, but they said 6%. Oh, well, we're not going to hire an agent for 6%. So scratch that. And yeah. they have no idea the value that you bring to the table. Yeah. So we are getting some questions. So Ariel is asking, what would you do if they say no, no? Uh, matter what they are not ready to sign at the appointment. So um, there's a couple of different um, ways to address this because there's a couple of um, um, ways to rephrase in a sense this question, which I'm not trying to rephrase the question. But as an example, when we pre-qualify and I go through if what I say makes sense, do you feel comfortable, confident, and then they say no? Well, I'm going to follow that up with is do I at least have a 1% chance of earning your business, which would be an alternative question. Um, or if 
everything does make sense. You guys feel absolutely comfortable. You absolutely do make, uh, you guys are confident. Do I at least have the opportunity to earn your business at some point? And then they sit there and they say, well, yeah, but we're just not really in a rush to make a decision. Okay, well, now that gives me the opportunity to ask the follow-up question. The follow-up question could be that, uh, well, when exactly are you looking at making the decision in regards to moving forward on the sale? So now I have an out to a certain extent. And in that, um, they could say, well, we're just going to wait through until the end of the month. We're still waiting on this information. We're still waiting on that information. Now I'm going to make the decision on whether I'm going to keep the appointment at the exact same for tomorrow. Or I'll say, you know what, Boyda, I understand you're waiting for your CPA to give you some information. Why don't we do this? Because the last thing I want to do is be in a position where you don't have all of your ducks in a row. You don't have all of the information ready because the information that I present to you tomorrow could be a variable subject to with whatever you're waiting on your CPA. So why don't we get the information from your CPA or whatever that is, fill in the blank, and then we can reschedule. Okay, when are you anticipating on getting that information? Oh, well, it should be any day now. Hey, not a problem. Let's do this. Let's reschedule it for the exact time next week. Would that be okay with you? So that gives me the opportunity to make sure I get some version of a yes, or in the prequel, they say no. And if they say no, at that point in time, I'm going to say, I'm going to be, I'm just being transparent. Later, I mean this with all due respect. What would be the purpose of me coming out to present if you're just not in a position to make a decision? Well, we just want to know some information. Okay, so so what's stopping you from moving forward? Well, we're thinking about maybe selling more towards the end of the year. Well, Lloyd, with all due respect, what I can do is I can stop by and just drop off some information because if we're waiting until the end of the year, that's going to be a different market. So now I can address that if they're not ready. But then there's the other part of that as well, um, Ariel, Ariel, is at the end of it, if they're not ready to sign the contract when we're in presentation, and I go through and I say, Lloyd, all we need to do now is simply sign the contracts. So I can't help you guys get to Chula Vista and be there by the summertime. Won't that be great? Yeah, we're just going to think about that. If they say no at that point, I can now go through with what I call as an isolation close. And I can now say, Lloyd, I, I, I got to take a minute to apologize to you. And then you say, well, why? Well, I was under the impression when I came out that you and your husband were ready to make a decision. So somewhere in my presentation, I lost you. Was it the price? Was it the commission? Was it me? That's what's called an isolation close. Well, we just didn't like the commission. That's fair. I've extracted with what is the objection, even though that they didn't tell me. So now I can address that and I can sit there and now use the uh, objection handling skills based on that. I handle it, I handle it, and then boom, I get them to sign. So that's why I wanted to make sure I was thorough on that response. That was great. If you guys are watching this or watch the replay, make sure to rewind and watch it like two, three times, because this I think was gold. And um, going along with that same question, what if they tell you, you know what, um, or maybe while you're pre-qualifying, or no, actually when you're at the appointment, you know what, we are not ready to, to sign right now because we want to interview three other agents we set an appointment with. Sure, absolutely. And Lloyd, I can appreciate that. I understand that you are wanting to interview the other agents. Now, if I remember correctly, you're looking for somebody that was a straight shooter, right? Yes. Yeah, you also mentioned to me that you were also looking for an agent that was gonna maximize your profits, correct? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. And then you also mentioned I showed you my entire plan of action with what I'm going to going to do, including the professional pictures with what you wanted, correct? Mm -hmm. So Lloyd, I'm a little bit confused. Um, is there something that's missing that I'm not doing at this point? No, everything you said sounds good. We just want to make sure to talk to the other agents just in case, you know, we cover all of our bases. Sure, absolutely. Is there a way that I can actually share with you a win, win, win all the way around? Yeah. Well, here's the thing, Loida, is why don't we do this? Okay. It sounds to me as if the, you actually have the right agent in front of you. And as far as interviewing other agents, I get that. I understand that is a possibility. But the other win that I'm referring to, not only you choosing the right agent, which is already here now, is I'm going to call the other agents and I'm going to give them the opportunity to bring their first buyers. And as a matter of fact, I'm going to do one even better. I'm going to give them the opportunity to do the first open house. Would you be okay with that? Um, yeah, I mean, if they're open to it. Yeah, absolutely. And you know what? Here's the best part. I'll give them a call as soon as we're, we're done here. I'll pick up the phone. I'll call them. I'll let them know that I went ahead and took the listing and I'll see which one of them have a buyer. And then I'll also ask to see if any one of them want to do the open house. Lloyd, do me a favor. Go ahead and sign right there. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay. Got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Awesome. 
So hopefully you guys saw how he did that. And then another thing, going back to still Ariel's question, if you have a listing presentation script, hmm. um, in the beginning, some of the questions, well, one of them um, would be like, there's three things that can happen in this today, right? Yeah. Um, and then at that point, one of them would be, are you ready to, you know, get the rolling ball rolling or put me to work or sign with me today? If they say yes, then, but later they're like, oh no, we don't want to sign. Um, would you recommend, okay, let's bring this. Well, earlier you said that you were ready. So what has changed between, you know, 10 minutes ago and now? So the, the, um, the initial close, you have the opportunity and I'll do this probably maybe 5% of the time. Um, you're going to go through, you're going to ask them three very specific questions before I begin, Lloyd, I'm really super excited about getting you and your husband over to uh, Chula Vista. Um, do you guys get a chance to take a look at the pre-listing packet that I sent you yesterday? Awesome. Great. Um, now there's really three important questions I want to ask you. Number one, are you guys in a position where you're really wanting to sell this home so you can get over to Chula Vista? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And then number two, are you in a position to actually list the home based on the suggested price that I gave you? Um, or did you guys want to test the market and leave it on the market for a little bit longer of a period of time? Uh, no, we're, we're ready to put on the market. We already wasted, you know, three months. Yeah. And, and the third most important question is, Loida, Joe, do you want me to handle the sale for you? We'll see. I mean, if everything looks good, if we can agree on everything, I mean, I, I don't see why not. So right there, if you would have said yes, I close. It's the, the response that you gave me, now I go into the rest of the presentation. At the end of my presentations tonight, one of three things will happen. Number one, you'll have the opportunity to list your home with me. Number two, you may decide not to list your home with me. And then number three, Loida, Joe, I might decide not to take your listing. Are you guys okay with any one of those three options? Perfect. Yes. Okay. Let's go into the rest of it. Awesome. So for those of you that are listening and you're like, what did he just say? Because all of that sounded so good. Obviously, that was a script. So Robert, tell them where can they find, find the script so that they can start memorizing it if they have no idea that you even need a listening presentation. Yeah, you got to come join our classes. That's on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Um, basically, you come to the class, I give you guys a script. You guys will have the opportunity to um, not only uh, role play, uh, we always give great advice. I get the benefit of having Loida with me on Wednesday. So, you know, uh, tag team uh, and increasing that value. So you got to go on Facebook and on Facebook, which I know Loida put uh, the link on there. It's a group called Top Realtor Training. And that Top Realtor Training group is a private group on Facebook. And um, that's where we uh, invest 30 minutes of our time on increasing our language of sales. Absolutely. There you go. So next question is, what advice can you give an agent for them to ask the tougher questions to find motivation? Um, I'll keep it simple. Uh, who, what, when, where, why, how? And if you want to throw in if is basically where you want your questions to start. Now, Celeste, in regards to what I just said, what you're going to do is you come up with questions that are based on motivation and then you start to practice them. Who's most excited? Why is this move so important? Um, uh, how soon were you wanting to get there? If we get your home sold in the next 30 days, would that be a pro or a con? Um, what's the benefit of moving? You know, you just go through these series of questions, but it's got to be about them, not about you, about them. And that's how you start to ask motivating questions, create an arsenal of them, your five, seven, who questions, your five, seven, uh, what questions, your five, seven, so on and so forth. Yeah. And then another piece of advice, I would just say, practice it, practice saying it with someone else in different mm -hmm. tones. That way, when you do have someone in person or over or over the phone, you sound very confident and with an authority attitude or, or tone of voice. So they're like, OK, you know, yeah, I, I yeah. got my answer. They're not going to question you because if you're stumbling, they're like, oh, OK, I'm going to keep on seeing maybe Celeste will lower her commission out, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then another question that she asks is, how do you overcome? We want to think about it. I know it's a question in their mind. Maybe she didn't answer. What what question would you ask or would you say? It's a loaded question. <laughs> so I'm going to try to keep it as narrow as I possibly can. Um, the the reason why they go into the we want to think about it is a good percentage of time. We're just not thorough in our presentation. We didn't do a good job of presenting. Um, we left too many things um, uncovered. So we have to look at how we present, because if you're getting this frequently, um, you know, one out of every four or five presentations, you, there's something missing in your script. You're just not doing a good job. And I'm not speaking to you specific, Celeste. And I know you're an amazing agent, um, but uh, an agent in general, you got to look at with what your presentation is. 
Number two, if you notice, I can do isolations. Isolation closes is I can go back to, for example, um, you know, uh, let me take a moment to apologize to you. Um, and the person goes, well, what do you mean? Why? Why are you apologizing to me? Well, usually by this time, sellers are asking, where do they sign? So I lost you somewhere. Where, where did I lose you? Okay. Uh, was it the price? Was it the commission? Was it me? And then what I do is I isolate that. And then I handle that objection. Or I can go in the direction. There's so many ways to go through this, but I'll give you guys some basic ones. Another way is, you know, I, I get it, Lloyda. I understand. Yes, Joe, this is a big decision. You guys have a lot of things to think about. But let's be honest. You guys need to make this decision. You guys want to get out there and you want to do this sooner than later. It sounds to me like as if you found the right agent. But let's think out loud. Okay, three minds are better than two. What are you guys thinking about? What is it that's stopping you from moving forward? So you have to continue to work on what those objection handlers are. And you should have three, four, or even five ways of attacking it, depending on who's in front of you. Okay, so that's that's part of that versatility that you're going to want to create. Awesome. Next mm -hmm. question from Miguel. What if they say that they have a friend in the business and out of courtesy, they want to interview them? So they loved you, Robert, but you know, we have a friend and we just feel bad if you don't talk to them. Yeah. So first thing is, of course, we want to make sure that we get that because when I go there, I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle that into my presentation. OK, but let's say, for example, they just whip it out at the very last second and they just surprise us with it, even though we went through everything we just did. And I'll just simply go, Lloyd, you're not looking at doing your friend a favor, are you? Go ahead. No. <laughs> okay. And you obviously had me out for a reason, correct? But I just feel bad. Yeah. And, and I do too. And I totally understand with where you're coming from. At the end of the day, though, you're looking at making the best decision for you and your family, not for your friend, correct? Yeah. Let's do a win-win. And the way we're going to do a win-win is we're going to go ahead and get the contract signed right now. And then what I'll do is I'll give your uh, friend Miguel a call and I'll let him know to bring his buyers by. And then that way he can get some commission that way. And you know what? I'm even going to do one better yet. I'll give Miguel the opportunity to hold the first open house. Would that be OK with you? Um, but, you know, we were hearing that he does it for like five percent and you're charging us six. Yeah, I totally get it. I'm sure you've heard of the saying you get what you pay for, right? Yeah. Yeah. You're not doing your friend a favor like we said that. Okay, I see. Yeah. yeah. And see, here's the other thing, if I can share with you. And again, I can go through like four or five different ways of handling this. But let's say you were an analytical. Let's say you were an uber analytical, because this is one of my favorite ones. Um, you know, I totally get with where you're coming from. Uh, and see, here's the thing, Lloyd. Is I don't know if you're aware of the fact that the average realtor um, in our board of realtors right now gets about 95.3% list price to sales price, meaning for every $100,000, they are handing you $95,000. See, Lloyd, me, on the other hand, I get 98.6% list price to sales price. So in reality, I'm getting you 3.3% more than the other agents. So if your friend is charging you five, in reality, I'm actually should be charging you closer to 8%. Lloyda, I'm only charging you 6%. Does that make sense? Mm, I see. I see. Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and do the right thing. Let's go ahead and sign the contract. I'm going to go ahead and give Miguel a call. I'll have him bring his buyers and I'll even set up a time as to when he's going to hold that first open house. Okay. Got it. Okay. So there's so many ways to, in a sense, um, um, you know, handle those type of object objections. So let me ask you this. Let's say it's a new agent. They set an appointment. They're going through all of this, but they don't have all these statistics and numbers. Like what would what would they bring at that point or what can they say? So I'm going to give you the, the, the quickest version possible. There's four primary personality styles. Driver. OK, someone who's very direct, right to the point. Tell me what it is. You have an analytical. These are the number of people. These are the people that go through and they start to dissect numbers, stats, and they get like this euphoric feeling in regards to, you know, average sales price. You have the expressives. The expressives are the ones that actually have like this over the top personality, the cheerleaders, the ones that are the centers of attention. And then there's the amiables. The amiables are the ones that are usually like your best friend, the people that are actually the closest to you. They're super sweet. They're usually just all of this. So for me, I identify who I'm working with and I'm going to address it accordingly. So even if I'm a brand new agency, this is like all like elite of elite stuff. I'm not trying to put myself on a pedestal, but there it is. So let's say, for example, you're an amiable and I now start to use 
things along the line of feeling emotions. Um, we want to do what's in the best interest for everybody, because again, these are the people that like, you know, uh, everybody. And I could just go in the direction of Lloyd. I totally understand. Yet I'm sure you're in a position where you're really taking his feelings into consideration, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. And of course, you also want what's best for you and your family, right? Mm hmm. I want to make sure when this is all said and done that we all feel comfortable with the entire process. And Lloyd, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and give Miguel the opportunity to bring all of his buyers. And for that matter, I'll even do one better. He can actually go ahead and do an open house. And then that way we don't feel bad about making uh, Miguel, you know, upset. Is that okay with you? Okay. I get yeah. it. So I start using words that are going to be specific to that personality, but there's so many, again, variations okay. uh, to do that. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Well, we are getting ready to wrap this up. So this is your last chance. Any last questions that you have? Um, if you have been enjoying this, drop me a comment. Let us know. Make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. Uh, there's also Robert's YouTube channel. The link is in the description. You guys got to subscribe to that one too, because there are tons of more trainings on his channel that he goes over even more in depth. Um, I know that Nancy asked, is the Facebook group free to join? Yeah, it's a it's a one time membership. It's five thousand um, dollars initial deposit. I'm kidding. There's no there's there's nothing. the The only cost, which is kind of funny, um, um, is is and when I say why it's funny is because the only thing you have to do is answer three questions. <laughs> and for whatever reason, every fifth person that actually does it, and it very clearly states in the very beginning, you must answer all three questions in order to be admitted. And people don't answer it. So that's the only thing I ask is is answer the three questions, okay? And then you'll be admitted. Awesome. There you go. So we hope to see you in that group. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Victor is saying, I have a hot lead. I need help closing in Eugene, Oregon. So if anybody is in Eugene, hit up Victor. <laughs> find him maybe on Facebook, Instagram, something. <laughs> Drop your Instagram, Victor, so people know how to find you. And with that being said, last chance. Any last questions? Uh, hopefully you have been finding these live streams very helpful. I love having Robert on here just because, you know, we have, we're able to go over so many different scenarios and you can really hear and see how things are said and questions that are asked. Um, any last things you want to mention, Robert, before we completely shut this down? I think just to kind of simplify um, the entire purpose of, of, of today's session is understanding the importance of separating yourself from your competition. And even though you may not necessarily think you have competition, you do. Because even when we look at our friends and family, everybody knows a person two or five. So by going through pre-qualifying is nothing more with what every professional in a sense does. And I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole. But the pre-qualification asking a series of questions so that it prepares you for two things. Number one is your mot their motivation. And then number two is what objections am I going to have to uh, be prepared for? Exactly. Mm -hmm. And just to reiterate, Matthew asks, what is the name of the Facebook group? It is Top Realtor Training. You can find the link in the description box below. Luz is asking, what if they only want to work with an agent that already has a buyer and ready to write an offer. So let's say it's an expired that, that she came across and they told her that. Yeah, it seems like we're actually addressing more objections, <laughs> which is cool. I'll take them all day long. Uh, I, I love handling objections, but if they're looking for somebody who's looking, working, uh, that only has working with a buyer, is I can go through in the direction of Lloyd. You're not li simply looking for just another agent that is just gonna bring their one buyer, are you? No. Yeah, you're looking for somebody who's gonna maximize your profits is with what I'm hearing. Yeah, I just don't want, you know, agents wasting my time. We go back on the market and the home sits. Yeah, and from what I'm also hearing is since you've been on the market for the last six months, the last thing you want to do is go under contract with another agent that is just going to uh, give you broken promises and not perform. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Lloyd, what I want to do is I want to be able to compare with what your previous agent did and with what I'm going to be doing different. My 22 point plan of action is going to show you exactly with what I do different. So I'm not looking at bringing you just the one or two buyers that I may have. What I want to do is I want to show you how I can bring you dozens and dozens of buyers. Did you want to do that today at three o'clock or should we do that at four o'clock? Uh, probably four would be better. Okay. So, um, yeah, I think we have to do like an objection handling. <laughs> that will be something separate. Yep. Yeah. But Luz, join the join the Facebook group. I don't think I have seen you in any of the trainings, but join that. Um, we can cover more in there. Yeah. And yeah, we're going to wrap this up. We have been, you know, a good 50 minutes of training. 
Um, if you guys have been enjoying this again, drop us a comment, make sure to follow Robert and myself on Instagram and YouTube, join the Facebook group. And Celeste is asking about a, an objection handling live. I'm not sure. We'll see. I have to ask Robert, maybe he's getting tired of these. We're, we're dropping you a <laughs> lot of knowledge. I mean, if you're implementing this, you have to at least DM us and tell us, Hey, you know, I did what you said and I got a listing or whatever. Cause, um, obviously this is <laughs> please all of our experience. So. Awesome, Robert. Thank you so much for being here. Everyone that's watching, thank you for also tuning in. Stay tuned for the next one. And with that being said, we will see you on the next live stream. Bye. See ya.